Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to see you all this beautiful Saturday morning to come into God's presence. We are very few. Um, it's uh, Yet we come into his presence with one accord, with one prayer, right? There's a where two or three gathered, his presence is there. It's eminent. So we don't need a whole lot of people to gather to be in his presence. It's a great privilege to look into our Lord's face every single day and praise and worship him and look at every single thing that he has done in our life. Every day is his mercy and grace. And we all know that we all have experienced it. We all have tasted and seen our Lord as good. That's the reason why this Saturday morning we are here, right? Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you here. I praise God for the opportunity that he gave me to visit India, visit my parents, and I mean my uh, mother and my in-laws, you know, Amy's parents and family and friends and all those wonderful time. The hand of God, the mercy of God was always there throughout the journey, throughout everything. So those are great testimonies. Every single day was a great testimony. Every single moment in India uh, was a big unknown for me, how I was going to tackle or face certain things. But many mercies, many miraculous ways, he has, his, his guiding hands have provided for every single need that was out there. So I'm glad today that I'm back here with a great peace of mind that everything is good in my master's hand. I mean, like Pastor was saying today, cast your burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. The sustenance part has never left. Every single day that we are going through is sustained by him. Amen. So let us all come into his presence for a second. Let us all close our eyes and just worship, usually on fasting prayers. I mean, let's just think why we do this fasting prayer once a month, right? We are interceding for every humankind. We have our own prayer requests for sure. But along with that, our whole purpose of Eternal Life Church of God's fasting prayer was to intercede for the people around us, for the nation, for Sacramento, for California, for U.S., for India, for everybody among us, right? Uh, the, the last chapter of Matthew clearly says what Jesus' last commandment is, go to the end of the world and make disciples. This is our discipleship. And this kind of uh, bondage of what we are going through nowadays cannot be overcome this, this kind can only be overcome through fasting and praying. That is why we are here once a month to sit down, fast and pray in His presence. Amen. Usually the message of fasting prayer is given after we have prayed, after we have dwelt in His presence, spent time, quality time with God and realized how close we are with Him. And then the message is given for a change today. Pastor asked me to give the message first and then we will sit down to pray. But I really want every one of you to have your minds and focus onto our Lord who has called us and separated us in this world. And he has asked us to come into his presence. Think about it. This Saturday morning, we could have been anywhere. We could have been going for a trekking or climbing mountains or whatever, right? Going for my bike ride. I could have been on the road, whatever. But we chose to be here. Because we love our master so much. We love our master because he has shown his grace every single moment in our life. And we know that we cannot survive without our master. We need him every single moment in our life. So have that compassion. Have that thought in your heart for a second. And every child of God who is listening to my word today. Close your eyes. Raise your hand and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open our hearts. Open our hearts to receive your word, Jesus. Help us to deliver this message that you wanted us to hear, Master. Prepare our hearts to receive this morning's message, Lord. In your presence, we commit each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These days are tough. Quarantine and COVID has become very tough on travel, especially international travel. I hate to admit it that COVID test is not 
uh, an easy thing when they stick those things up your nose and throw it and all. I had to undergo that test at least three times or maybe more um, because of my travels and things like that, right? It's, it's, it, it's tough time out there, but we have to do what we have to do to get through things. But these kind of pandemic situations and these um, different natural phenomena that is happening. Oh, the best part is while I was in India, I heard that the entire state of Texas was frozen. Flights were delayed and people delayed and people were telling me like, you know, rebook your flight or whatever. I don't know what is going to happen with you when you land in Dallas. The whole airport is frozen. There is storm going on. There is snow falling all over the place. There were many storms that is happening through all. This morning, I want to talk about these storms itself. You know, I want to, my message is purely about the Lord of storms. Hallelujah. All these storms in U.S., Texas and everything, the communications down, people, my own people from my own office suffered a lot because they didn't have power. They didn't have gas. They didn't have uh, heat. Um, a lot of stores ran out of food. For many days, small children suffered. Many families suffered without electricity, freezing or near freezing temperature. But my prayer this morning is when we go through all of these natural calamities or storms, may God cover his protection over each and every one of us during these storms and natural disasters. These are beyond our control. We don't have any control over it. But I want to introduce you to the real Lord during these storms. And with today's message, I pray that we get a strong presence of Holy Spirit and we experience a strength and we come out with a renewed strength, rejuvenation with him. And let's pray for such an experience and continue to the message. Amen. Hallelujah. First and foremost, I want to, when we talk about the storm, the biggest story that comes into Bible, uh, into mind from Bible is the story where Jesus calms the storm, right? I just want to Elsa, if you're ready with your Bible, if you can read Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. The story is very familiar to all, where Jesus is in the middle of the ship and, she, and he is calming the storm. Mark 4, 35 to 41. On, the, on that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and, that, and, the, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the and the wind ceased, and they were and they and they were was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still have no faith? And they they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Hallelujah. A very familiar story. We all are so familiar with this, what happened in the boat. Jesus, the rabbi himself told the disciples, let us go to the other side. So everybody jumped in, uh, more boats joined and everybody started going and the, you know, the storm started happening and people started to think, this man who called us to jump onto the boat and let us go to the other side is fast asleep there. Does he not care? You know, people, all of a sudden the disciples started to get worried about the storm. And then he is awakened, Jesus is awakened and told, and Jesus calms the sea and turns around and look at the disciple and say, you people of little faith, Alpa Vishwasigale in Malayalam, it is called as Alpa Vishwasigale, you people of little faith, don't you have faith in me while I'm here? When Jesus is asking us to go to the other side, when he is inviting us to join on his journey, and when some storm, a simple storm happens, and when we turn around and see, God, you don't you care about me, my situation? Is this why you put me in this storm? God today is asking you the same question. You people of little faith, don't you know that I can, my hands can sustain? Those hands that has borne the, the, the scar that is still there from the death, from the cross that he has borne upon. 
Don't you know that I can sustain? Hallelujah. Today, when a storm hits us in life, Christ is turning to us and asking the same question. You know, 2020 has not been kind to many people. And it, it just continue going on into 2021 also. A lot of us, if we have to sustain through this pandemic situation, if we have to survive this, we need the grace of our God. Without the grace of our Lord, we will not be able to see the end of this pandemic. Amen. So when we go through these storms, there are a few points that I want to bring it up into you in, in today's uh, discussion. First and foremost, God's judgment in these storms. I want you to take attention to Jeremiah because I have 30 minutes left. I'm going to Go ahead and read the verses also. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 32. Just one verse there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. Bible has shown us again and again behind many of these natural disasters, plagues, pandemic. God is talking to us. Could it be one of the judgment of God for mankind? You know, as we enjoy our life today, I'm, I'm looking at each and every one of us, like I've got the gallery view open. Every house that I see in the screen is prosperous. Not a single house that I see with poverty, starvation or anything. Right? We all are so blessed. And we should enjoy those blessings from God, for sure. But... Our whole purpose is not just to eat and enjoy all the worldly pleasures and that's it without, without fearing the judgment of tomorrow. You know, God is reminding us through each one of these situations, natural calamities or whatever, he's reminding us again and again. And this is a warning for the humankind, not just to enjoy such worldly pleasures, but there is a greater purpose destined for us, an eternal purpose. Now, dear children of God, when we see such pandemic and such storms and natural disaster around us, we should pause for a moment and then rethink if this is truly a warning from God that is given to mankind. When such storms arise from the ends of the earth, now as the verse says, how is that? Uh, Jeremiah was, okay. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. So when, 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 when we know that these storms are rising from different parts of the world, different ends of the world, it's extremely important that we should look forward or we should look towards Jehovah's face. This morning, I want to encourage each and every one of you who is listening to look into his face. When we go through each and every trials and tribulations, we need to look onto his face. See, the storm of the Lord will burst. You know, in, in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 23, also we read that the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down to the heads of the wicked. You know, <clears throat> there's a small incidence from history that I, uh, I want to bring it up today. There's a city uh, called as um, Messina City. It's, it's near Sicily in Italy. In 1908, there was an earthquake. You can Google, uh, you know, Messina City, Sicily, or Messina City earthquake. It was one of the greatest earthquakes that they have seen. So many people died, thousands and thousands, 82,000 people died in that one earthquake. The story goes like this. On December 25th, on Christmas Day, when people were celebrating Christmas, one of the newspapers there has published an article. It's a simple headline with a big headline. If there is a God, because they were celebrating Christmas, you know, this headline read, so if there is a God, let him show his presence. You know, the if there is a true God, show us by making an earthquake. Humankind doesn't need to challenge God like that. You know, the city of Messina and uh, uh, Reggio Calabria were almost destroyed, completely destroyed. 82,000 people died in that day. Three days later, on December 28th, such a big earthquake happened. Do we really need to challenge God to see if 
God can do certain things like that. We all know that we cannot move forward without God. If you, if you are God sufficient, then that is enough. If it's a judgment, then what is the first thing that we should do? When we know that God's judgment is upon us, when we know that these different calamities and pandemic situations are upon us, what is one thing that God is asking us? What is that one thing? If, if any of you can remember, when a judgment happened, what is that one thing God is asking us to do? Repent. Repent. Turn back. Turn away from your evil ways. Look onto the face of the Lord and see the mercies and the greatness that he is doing. Hallelujah. So first and foremost, I want to say that the storm of judgment from God, when it happens, we should identify it. We should understand what the warning signs are. We should turn back away from our ways. I mean, in the midst of all these storms, we will still be able to see the protection of our Lord. I mean, that's my second point that I want to bring to is God's protection in these storms. I want to focus on Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2 through 6. But the important verses that I want to read is actually verse 2 and then 5 and 6. If you have taken Isaiah chapter 4, you can see it's such a small book, really small book. Just six verses. But very powerful message in those six verses, right? Verse 2 goes like this. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the survivors in Israel. I'm going to skip verse 3 and 4 and go directly to verse 5. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble. There a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. Over everything, the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter and a shade for the heat of the day and a refuge and a hiding place from the storm and the rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how it is written, right? It really brings back to that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aven yenum ennum madiyayaven Yende yeshu enikya nallaven Aven yenum ennum madiyayaven Abatil rogatil Van praya sangal Maname aven madiyayaven Abatil rogatil van praya sangalil maname aven madiyayave umar bhumi atra adikadinam pradikulangal anu nimisham umar bhumi atra adikadinam Pagal me gustambum, Ratriagni tuna, yenne anu dinam vari nadatum. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kartav and the Sandhi Lirikin over a Vishwasi word and Chovikin or a Chodim Dan in the presence of the Lord when we are sitting. Each and every brother and sister who is experiencing His guidance, His presence in your life, ask yourself this question. When the cloud of pillar is created, Hallelujah. When the cloud of smoke 
by the day is created. It is created to give you shade. Hallelujah. Remember Hagar. When Hagar was crying out in the middle of the desert, when there was no hope for her and her child. Hallelujah. Our God was able to open up a stream for her in the middle of the desert. Hallelujah. This morning, if you are going through this storm, hallelujah, understand that our God is powerful enough, mighty enough to open up something for you. He is open. He is, pro he is mighty enough to provide that shelter and shade from the heat of the day and the refuge and a hiding place from the storm and the rain that is going to be hunting you. Amen. Hallelujah. God has promised us that he will be your shelter and God is our hiding place and resting place. This morning, dear brothers and sisters, believe that God is the one who is your refuge. Without him, there is no other place to go. Amen. Hallelujah. The next point I want to bring or to talk to you about this morning is the God's restoration by the storm. So he sends the storms to have the judgment on you. I mean, and then the second point we said was God's protection in the middle of all these storms that he is putting you through. But then you should understand that God does restoration from these storms also. We all know the story of Jonah, right? When the Lord asked Jonah to go to Nineveh, he tried to run away to Tarshish. Where is Tarshish? Where is Nineveh? Jonah thought that he can hide away from the Lord. But what happened? The ship was stopped by God's storm. The ship went into the storm and it was stopped by it. And notice how the storm eventually got the prophet. Like they went through a lot of suffering. And you know, they, they were... They, they went through a tough time in that ship. But in the end of the day, God made the prophet reach the place where he wanted Jonah to go. Hallelujah. When you are going through these storms and when you try to run away from what God's plan is, he sends tiny storms your way to just to fix your life. You know, these, these storms are sent in our life to fix things. You know, such storms can be in the form of diseases. Some of it are failures in our life. Some projects that we work so hard. I have had such kind of experiences also. Some projects that we work so hard. And in the end of the day, there are certain issues, compilation issues or logical errors and different, different things that we face through. But understand that when we face through these certain issues or even rejections, you know, the kind of managers that we have relied upon on the last minute. I didn't expect him to turn around his face and reject me like this in front of the whole thing. Right? So many of these experiences that when we come across, know that these storms are put in your life so that your life can be restored back into the balance where it is supposed to happen. Remember when Isaac came out and started digging wells where his father has first dug wells, right? He went back and started restoring each one of those wells. What happened? Lord, the whole nation started causing issues. Some of, even the hard work was put in by Isaac, but many people came and reclaimed those wells saying that those are my ancestral properties so that well belonged to me. Some people went back and closed some of those wells, right? And uh, we, we read many tough situations where Isaac has been put through. But eventually when he went back and dug one big well where God wanted him to have that big well, it was flourished, it was prospered. Amen. So it doesn't matter where you go when, you, when, when the message, when God gives you a proper message saying that this is what you want to do. And, uh, um, you know, um, many times it, it happens, especially in, with good intentions. Sometimes we also think that this is what God wants in my life or this is what I should do because the Lord is asking me to do. But we might even start many godly ministries, even in our church, thinking that this is what God wanted us to do. And when we face troubles and oppositions from different sides, in the midst of all of things, just remember that our God will direct us to the place where he wanted us to be. Hallelujah. So do your work. Do your ministry, but when you are faced with such storms and troubles, do not worry. God knows how to restore it back into the way where God wants us to be. 
just like how Jonah told the captain of the ship, right? Amen. Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh, but he ran away to Tarshish. And in the midst, when they were caught in the storm, they were all wondering what is happening. What is happening? Then the captain asked, like you know, what is going on? And uh, probably they knew he was a prophet. And then Jonah said, uh, maybe it is me. <laughs> That's all he said. Maybe I am the reason of the storm. And as soon as Jonah was casted away into the ocean, the whole storm ceased. Remember, just notice how one person, Jonah was one person to decide to run away from God's direction and the entire people and their crew on that ship was suffering. This morning, I want to reach out to the fathers and mothers of your family, the, the head of the family out there. One person, your one action, your one misguided way of living, your one unholy action that you do or the wrong example that you set for your children. Hallelujah. Your children and generations after that could be suffering the curse of your that action. Amen. Jonah was just one person who ran away from God's direction. The entire ship, the entire crew was suffering. I mean, this morning, if such a judgmental storm is upon us, if we have experienced the protection of the Lord through those judgmental storm, and if we know that God is asking us to restore our life, this is your chance. Fast and pray and this kind will not go away without fasting and praying. Hallelujah. If you need restoration in your life, you have to be on your knees crying out loud, God, Jehovah, I have sinned in your presence. God, Jehovah, I have fallen short of your glory. Restore my life. If such a storm is required to restore your life, Jesus, God, I welcome that storm in my life. Give me that storm so that my life can be restored in the way where you wanted me to reach, not the place where I wanted to go to tarnish, but the place where you wanted me to go. Hallelujah. Restore my life. I mean, hallelujah. The presence of God be upon each and every one of us. May the words be convicting to each and every one of us and let us be uncomfortable in his presence. Let these words prick our heart and make us uncomfortable and make us restore our life back into the way he wanted us to be. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about many storms. Storms are being given names. Eastern storm, the southern storm, the nor'easter. There are many. I'll come into that point also in a little bit. But when the prophet reached, but eventually after going through all those storms, the prophet reached the right place. God's people will reach the right place. Amen. So when we are faced with such storms in our life, remember to pray. Lord, if such a storm is sent by you, if such a storm is necessary to restore my life, then I surrender my life into your hands. Let your will happen, Master, not mine. Let not my decision of go to tarnish happen, but your will to restore me to Nineveh happen. Hallelujah. The fourth point I want to bring about with the storm is God's way during these storms. God's way that he shows during these storms. A small book called as Nahum in our Bible. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3. I want to read one verse out of it. The Lord is slow to anger, but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwinds and the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Hallelujah. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His ways are in the whirlwinds and the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Amen. You know, when we think about the storm, when, when, when people go through the storm, what is the, the, that one relief when people go through the storm? When there is humongous hurricane happening, we all have heard about the term, the eye of the storm, right? The eye of the storm is where the most calm is. <laughs> but that is a sign that as soon as this eye of the storm passes over the city, the biggest destruction is following, right? So, but that moment in time where you find the calm, where you can get out and see the whole wall of storm around us, but the eye is a peaceful place. 
God's way when he reveals, it is just like how it is seen in the eye of the storm, right? That um, the uh, Bible talks about, uh, I was just mentioning, right, different kinds of storms and whirlwinds and north wind, south wind, east wind, west wind, all of these, uh, each one of these wind has got its own peculiarity. They are mentioned in the Bible, each one. Some are warm, some are hot, some are strong, some are cold. The different kinds of you know each one of those kind of wind is a different spiritual warfare that you can relate to in the bible that's probably a message a completely different message for some other time i mean these are called as the winds of prayer or prayer winds and prayer uh, winds prayer is a uh, is a is, is prompted by the holy spirit when you are going through the toughest time of your life when you are going through a very harsh time when we sit down and pray in such a way, when the Holy Spirit is prompting us to pray in such a way, the wind that is blowing strong can come to a stop. When, when human race is going through, when thousands of people are going through suffering of a particular kind and when we sit in the presence of Holy Spirit, the way the winds move will stop. When there is no wind happening, the winds can be blown. It depends on how your prayer is. I mean, all of these are different prayer warrior strategies. It's a completely different message for some other time. But the winds of prayer is particularly effective. Know that each and every one of you who prays in the Holy Spirit, these are effective. They, they have always worked in my life when I have been thrown in the middle of a storm. They will work for you also. It's not just for masses, but it works for individuals also. Let's get back to our thoughts here, you know. Definitely, God will reveal His ways in beautiful and unbelievable manners to His children when, when we are going through the storm. Especially um, in the recent, uh, recent travel journeys when I was there, when I was stuck with different situations and I was put in different situations where I didn't know uh, what is the next best course to do or which direction to go miraculously God opened up and give ideas and people speak for you where we least expect them to speak for you. I mean, we all know D.L. Moody, right? Um, an evangelist who lived in the 1800s, very famous, very popular person. D.L. Moody, when he started his church, he had his uh, worship minister or gospel singer, very popular, um, Ira D. Sankey or Ira David Sankey was his name. He's a gospel singer, he sang many, many songs. But they were all at the time of civil war, right? 1875, around that time frame, right? Um, they have all been part of the civil war. When Ira D. Sankey one time gave a testimony like this, that he was sailing in a steamer boat, back then there was only steam boats, right? Uh, he was sailing on a steamer board and people recognized him that he is Ira D. Sankey and said, okay, why don't you sing a song and he, he wrote many songs also, but he chose to sing this one song, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Savior like a shepherd lead us. I know many of you like Joseph Uncle and Jason and brother, you, you all probably know this song very well, right? Savior like a shepherd lead us. When Aradi Sankey was singing this song, you know, somebody, an unknown person approached him on the boat and said, were you in the Union Army? on so-and-so time frame at so-and-so location and things like that. And he got surprised. Yeah, I was. How did you know about this thing? He said, you know, when you were in the Union Army, I was in the Confederate Army. On that night, I was on the nat night patrol and you were on guard duty. And when I was on my night patrol and when I came across your camp, I saw you. And I spotted you and my musket was targeted towards you, ready to shoot you down that night. Amen. But on guard duty, you were singing the same song, Savior like a shepherd lead us. The song that you sang, I couldn't shoot you at that moment. I wanted to listen to this song. It reminded me of my childhood, my days when my mother used to sing this song to me. And it reminded me of the love and grace my Father, my Lord has provided. And the mercy throughout the war that He has protected us and kept us. And I could not shoot you down that night. Remember, even Sankey did not know that God has prevented a bullet from entering him. 
He didn't know years after later this testimony is coming out. There are many storms through which we are going through, but God's protective ways are surrounding us. Believe this today, my dear brothers and sisters. Know that his hands are working in so many miraculous ways. That surrendering, that care, that guard from God's protection. In the eye of the storm, he remain in control. Like the singer says, right? In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Amazing song, beautiful song. Hallelujah. That is what I want to bring down to. Now, my time is going on fast here. I want to bring to the last point that I want to mention. God's redirection in the storm. Quickly turn to Acts chapter 27. That's a bigger chapter. We're not going to read the whole chapter. But the essence of Acts chapter 27 is Paul is sailing to Rome. You know, when it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius. And they all boarded the ship so that they can sail to Rome. They took the coast of province of Asia and they were put out into the sea. As you read the story... Heavy storms were throughout their journey. They could not proceed forward. There were many roadblocks that came into their way. But when we come down all the way to verse 22, Paul had a vision and Paul is sharing about his vision to the whole ship, the crew that was going on. They were hungry. They did not have food for many days and they went through a really tough time. They were tired fighting the storm, trying to redirect in different ways and all that. But then Paul reads such in verse 22. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood by me and said to me, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the life of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. So he knew that they were going to get crashed into some island. But keep up your soul. They were, as we read further, there were 278 souls on that ship. Not one soul was lost in that storm. Eventually, they all... Uh, withered and fought and went and reached at the island of Ma Ma Malta, right? Now, Acts chapter 28 reads what happened at the island of Malta. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out of the heat fastened into his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said, This man must be a murderer. For though he escaped the sea, the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook. Uh, my timer is up. But, but Paul shook the snake off the fire and suffered no ill effect. The people expected him to swell up and fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen, they changed their mind and said he was God. Hallelujah. When, when, the, island, when the islanders see, it's a very beautiful verse there. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. When you are in front of a customs officer, when you are in front of an immigration officer at the port of Henry, when you know that certain things are going to be hunting you, certain things are going to be stopping you, when you are in the middle of that situation with your visa, H1B, H4, whatever visa situation you are, or you are in the middle of that job situation when you need that your manager to back you up or your team to back you up, know that unusual kindness from different people comes without even you knowing God provides his way without even you knowing God provides his redirection right Paul wanted to reach Rome and he reached Rome eventually that's where God wanted him to go but there was a small detour to Malta small redirection when the storm is redirecting you to reach and crash into an island 
Do not be despair. Know that God is in control. He has a mightier plan for you. When that viper is twisted around your hands, may that be in the form of sickness for your children or hunger, poverty, may it be part of pandemic. No matter what that situation, that viper is is wound around your hand. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and drop that viper into the fire of Holy Spirit and pray. Nothing is going to touch you. Shake your hands into that fire of Holy Spirit and pray. It is not going to touch you. This storm is to redirect you for a greater purpose. Hallelujah. Know that the bigger hand of our master is working behind each and every storm. God's grace will carry you further. His grace is sufficient. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Every word of God, every man, every brother and sister who is listening to my word, who know that his grace is sufficient, say Amen. Raise your hand and say, His grace is sufficient. What is it? His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. This morning, remind you again and again. May I encourage you again and again with the word of God that his grace is sufficient for me. His grace is sufficient. Wipe, shake that hand, shake that wiper out of your hand. Let it fall into the fire of Holy Spirit. Let it burn out there and may people see the work of the Lord, the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah. Paul was staying there. The islanders were very gracious towards him. His health ministry started. So many healing ministries started in that island. So that detour that God put in his life was necessary. I mean, this, uh, this beautiful song that Joshua sang today, Blessed Assurance. We started off today's worship song with that song. Amazing song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Right? Who wrote that song? Yeah, we know. Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby, her actual name is something else, but we all commonly know her as Fanny Crosby. She's a mission worker. She's a poet. But there is an amazing testimony from Fanny Crosby also, you know. When she was born, when she was just six weeks old, Crosby caught a cold and developed an inflammation in her eyes. At the time, the treatment was to put mustard uh, polluses or whatever, the something, some medicine made out of mustard. And that was applied and treated for the discharge from her eyes. And according to Crosby, this procedure actually damaged her optic nerve and made her blind. I mean... So she's a blind poet. She wrote the songs and sing the songs by being a blind poet. But such an amazing, beautiful, she has written thousands of songs. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine is one of them. You know, Josh, when you were singing that verse number two, right? Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. I mean, the blind lady is singing visions of rapture is bursting upon my sight. Hallelujah. On verse number three, the blind lady is singing what? Watching and waiting, looking above. Where is she looking? She's looking above. Blind lady is looking above. Who can do such miracles? Our God can do such miracles. He can put sight into a blind lady also. So this morning, if you are going through that storm, if you're going through that struggle, this blind lady, how she received the visions of an open heaven, visions of rapture. Right? God can provide such vision to each and every one of us. In our life, when we see such kind of redirections that our minds cannot comprehend, we won't even know, Lord, what is happening. Believe, understand, and know that this is a redirection that God has provided. All these changes are for your own good. Eventually, you will reach the place where God has intended you to. So I want to conclude my message today, dear God, dear, ch dear children of God, just know that no matter what storm we are faced with today, believe that his wonder working hands are behind it. It works. And when you believe this, you will see that God's judgment in the storm, if you need to repent and turn back, do so. You see that God's protection is in the storm. No matter what you go through, his hands have covered you. You see that God's restoration is in that storm. God loves you so much that he want to pull you back and restore your life. You know that God's way is in the storm. He provides a way. If he has put you in the storm, he provides a way to get out of that also. And know that God's redirection is in the storm. Because if you come into a storm block, if you run your ship into an island of Malta, know that there is a purpose why he wanted you to be there. Eventually you will reach Rome.
Hallelujah. Let us all close our eyes. And I hope that this morning's, the small message that God has put is a small thought prog provoking thought that God wanted us to hear. And it is his intention that we listen to this message. I mean, hallelujah, dear heavenly father. We submit each and every one of us who's gathered here, each and every one of us who is going through the storms in life. I mean, hallelujah, Jesus. You are the Lord of storms. You are the provider of every situation. You are the way maker of every situation. Through the middle of the storm, in the eye of the storm, you will be my anchor and you will be my guide. Hallelujah. Lord, if such a storm is required for the judgment that you are showing us, may it be master. If such a storm is required for the restoration for my life, may it be master, let your will be done and not mine. Let your will be done, Lord. We open ourselves in front of you, Master. We open, we stand in your presence with open arms, Master. May each and every one of us be blessed, Lord. And may your will be done, Master, in our life. And through this, Jesus, hallelujah, has helped us and encourages us for the days that is to come. Through these pandemic situations that we are going through, through Corona, COVID, no matter what is in front of us, help us, Master, help us guide us through these storms. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for hearing me. And thank you, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity. As always, uh, this message, I wanted to speak. And then uh, just quick question to Pastor. As Pastor, do you have a thought or a theme or a message in your mind? As always, Pastor gives free reign, free will for each and every one of us to pick what. I believe that God wanted to deliver this message and somebody is blessed from hearing my voice. Thank you. Thank you.